Welcome to the Vocation Creation Podcast, helping you create the work you can't wait to wake up to do. Get inspired by people who have designed their own unique vocation and entrepreneurial experts sharing valuable information on starting and growing your business. Now, here's Jennifer Wendell with Vocation Creation. So happy to welcome to the Vocation Creation Podcast today, Marshall Cease, who is currently in Las Vegas, a serial entrepreneur, writer, director, producer, filmmaker, and the creator of a brand new venture called Spartan Artists. Hello, Marshall. Hello. So great to be chatting with you, Jennifer. Looking forward to this. Been looking forward to this. Thank you. Me too. Is there anything else I could add to that already impressive resume? <laughs> you know, you get too many slashes in your title and things just start to get confusing. <laughs> I always, uh, people ask me what I do and I just say professional storyteller because it's, there's so many different ways that I tell stories these days. What a wonderful, what a wonderful introduction. Um, I remember you saying, uh, quote unquote, storytelling is my ethos. Yes. So talk to us a little bit about that and how that led to the creation of Spartan Artists. Hmm. Stories, you know, it's interesting because as you grow up in life and you explore different things, there's always, there's always an underpinning something that's kind of, you know, always pulling you through. And for me, that's, that's the power of story. And it's our oldest form of entertainment you know i mean if we go back to the cave drawing days i i can only imagine you know ook standing there recounting his battle with the mammoth that night <laughs> and, and and ook's friend was kind enough to to notate it on the wall for future generations <laughs> to to celebrate ook and his great victory people think these whiteboard <laughs> drawings are a new thing they are not <laughs> Yes, illustrated meeting notes way back when. <laughs> oh, that's great. But yeah, it's, you know, it's how, I've, I believe it's how we grow as people. You know, we, we see ourselves in a character and that character undergoes some sort of struggle and they come out the other side better than they were before it. And I, it's just, that to me is life. And the more stories I can tell, the more resonance I can create with people, the more that they can see themselves in it and, and know that they're going to come through the other side and they're going to come out having grown. That's a really good point. There's always the storytelling arc, right? There has to be a conflict or something to grow through, right? In order for it to be a story that keeps our interest. Yeah. Yep. This is the stories where it's like, well, meet Joe. Joe has a good life. Not much happens. The end. <laughs> Voila, great story. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite quotes that a, a writer friend of mine who I look up to told me, he says, the dog goes to eat from the dog bowl is not a story. The dog goes to eat from the cat bowl is a story. It's a good way to put it. I, I know I've heard right? the classic uh, dog bites man. Eh. Man bites dog. Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, same concept. Yep. So what uh, can you what can you tell us about Spartan Artists? I know this is brand new for you. It's a new adventure. So uh, tell us a little bit about what is happening with Spartan Artists and what you do for other people through that. Absolutely. So. In a nutshell, Spartan Artists is an online community and learning platform completely designed for artists and creatives to get the personal and professional development tools they need to succeed. I, I personally believe that success is a skill, a learnable skill, and it's not a matter of trying to write the best whatever, song, screenplay, painting, you know, it and then hope that somebody just magically whisks you away to the, the wonderful world of stardom. It's, it's about the practice and the relationships and the professional skills that go around the art that really, really makes or breaks a career. And I've had such an eclectic career, starting off as an attorney and then doing the tech entrepreneur thing and, and then music and now filmmaking that I've seen it from so many different perspectives and I, you know, even through my creative career, have been facilitating 
sales training classes for Fortune 100 companies and, and all the time wondering what in the world do all these things have to do with each other? And with Spartan artists, I feel like it's a beautiful combination of everything I've learned. And it's, it's this weird Venn diagram that has like six different bubbles all intersecting <laughs> at a single point that enables me to do it. So Spartan Artists is the, the heart of that Venn diagram, the, the overlapping, I wonder what shape that would make, six circles. Well, we'll just call it a hexagon for the fun of it. <laughs> that's Spartan Artists for you. That's, that's perfect. And what, if a person goes to the Spartan Artists website um, or, you know, talks to you for assistance in their own creative journey, what is it that you can offer them? What, what do you help them with specifically? Yeah. So right now, if you go to SpartanArtist.com, uh, you'll, you'll kind of read a little bit about my story and the mission behind Spartan Artists. I have a manifesto that really kind of tugs at your heartstrings if you resonate with it and, and agree with the ethos. And at the end of the site, there's kind of two choices. The first option is a free option, and you can take my uh, creative success blocker quiz. So I interviewed hundreds of artists and creatives to ask them a simple question. What is the number one challenge that you have in your creative career? And after analyzing all those results, I noticed that there were four distinct blockers that caused people to get stuck. And I saw myself in every single one of them because I have been through every single one of those blockers. And, and we encounter those from time to time. So I created a quiz that helps people identify exactly which blocker is kind of their primary, what's holding them back the most. And then I also, you know, used my past history plus all the, you know, psychology background that I have to create a four day challenge where for, you know, 30 minutes to an hour a day, there's, there's about 15 minutes of training and then exercises that go along with it for four days that, helps people overcome each and every one of those blockers so that you leave that four day challenge with a greater sense of momentum, energy, and passion for what you're doing than you might've felt in, in quite some time. So that's what we've got right now, but I'm going to be building curriculum out all sorts of things. I mean, I'm going to be very open and asking what people need and I'll be building out curriculum based upon what folks need. And, and soon I'll be doing more, you know, speaking on socials and stuff like that and putting out as much free content as I can too, knowing that, you know, not everybody um, will be able to, to pay for some of the, the deeper coursework. Sure. It sounds like you're taking an iterative and a very um, responsive approach to how you're building this out, depending on what people do need from you. Uh, so I, I love that. I'm doing the same thing with vocation creation. So I love that. I really enjoy that approach. Just, um, you know, here's what, here's what the core of it is. Now for the rest of it, let me know what, what needs can we fill, right? What, what can I help you with that will help you make those next steps or to continue the path or in some cases to start the path? It's, and to be frank, like that's not where I necessarily start. I think as an artist, you know, you get inspired and, and you want to make the thing that, that inspired you. And so it was in a way... I had to pull myself back and to say, maybe I just don't need to rush off and make the thing I want to make. Maybe I need to talk to people first to understand what they want. And so it was not my norm. It, it, took, it took effort on my part to keep reining myself back and to say, no, build what people need, not necessarily what you want to build. Yeah. And, and well, the best is to find that intersection of both, of course. <laughs> so, Absolutely. and it sounds like you're doing that uh, perfectly well, with Spartan Artists. Yeah. And that's, I think, with any venture like this, if it's not based in a true, genuine desire to serve, I, it's, it's not going to have long legs. And so because I led with that, with my true desire to help people like myself and, and earlier versions of myself, hearing the stories and reading, reading what people wrote as their number one challenge, I mean, it, there were multiple times it brought me to tears because I, and just, I want to help. And when that is what's leading you, you kind of drop whatever the thing is that you might have thought was a good idea and, and it encourages you to make the thing that's gonna make a difference. 
it also helps drop any blockages that you might have around fear as well or or uncertainty over where to go next because you see the need and you see that you have the ability to respond to it so why wait you have a a piece of the puzzle that other people need from you and um, that really does give you a sense of clarity and motivation and um, and momentum that I think can be really lacking otherwise if you're just making work that you're making in a bubble. I could not agree more. Awesome. Well, apparently we are on the same wavelength. <laughs> we are on the same page. <laughs> so you've had a multi, very uh, varied career. Clearly you've worked in many different um, entertainment and artistic disciplines. So what is the best advice you could give to someone who has these same uh, maybe artistic or entrepreneurial drives that you have had in your life. You've, you've made a successful career in literally almost any type of, of artistic expression there is other than I think, I think I didn't hear you mention any sort of like painting, <laughs> but other than that, you've made a successful career for yourself in your past. I won a drawing contest as a kid, if that well, counts at all. It so. count. Did you draw Timmy the turtle or the pirate guy for that? For that? <laughs> Remember? I don't know if you're, you're probably not old enough. <laughs> there was draw, draw Timmy the turtle and you could like win a week scholarship to some drawing class back really? in like comic That's books great. when I was a kid. <laughs> That. It's a class. You'd have to look it up. Anyway, inside joke for people who are over 40 like me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right at 40, so I might have just missed the cutoff. Exactly. So, um, so what would you advise to people who are just not sure if they have what it takes to make a leap into uh, making their creative or entrepreneurial passions a reality? Yeah. Um, well, I... I have a very core belief that anybody can get to the point to where it ha they have what it takes to, to make that leap. I don't think there's anybody on the face of this planet who is incapable of it. And it's, it's just a matter of understanding and taking a very realistic approach of, of where you're at. And which is why I think it's so important that whatever you direction you go and you got to test a bunch of stuff before you find this but you find the thing that you you want to keep doing and you want to keep getting better at and when you when you find that and you just keep learning you're eventually going to get better i heard this great story of um through a friend of a screenwriter who's now you know doing a lot of big shows and has had a successful career but started off as a journalist and my friend asked well what you know what got you into screenwriting and he goes oh well i you know entered a screenwriting contest and I ended up winning and that got me this opportunity. And I was like, Oh, that's amazing. Was that your first screenplay? He goes, Oh, Oh no, no, no. That was like my 12th screenplay. I was like, Oh, oh. Um, was it? So this is the first time that you entered a contest. Oh no, no. I entered every one of my screenplays into a contest. <laughs> this is just the first time I won. <laughs> that's literally at the overnight success, right? <laughs> Exactly. No, it took 12, 12, you know, blood, sweat, and tear entries. And, uh, and then suddenly, hey, look at that. This journalist has become a screenwriter. And that's what I want to peel back the curtain on. I want to peel back the curtain on this is what the path looks like. And, and you need to have, you know, purity of purpose to follow it because you got to love what you're doing and what you're putting out there to stay in the game that long. And it's, it becomes delicate because it's, that's an exponential curve. You know, it is not linear like our minds think. And if you have worked a corporate job and you're used to your 5% a year raise, you, it trains you to think linearly. And that's just not what the path to success outside the matrix looks like. And so you have to get comfortable with very, very low increases. It's the compounding effect. And it can feel like you're not making any progress. And, but at the same time, you can't lose faith that you're on the path and you're growing at the right rate because 10% gains early on doesn't mean much, but 10% gains once you've been doing that for 10 years can mean millions of dollars. And so it's a matter of staying in the game with the mentality that you need to succeed. Because, and this is why I'm so into psychology, as soon as you start to fall into this um, acceptance of mediocrity, you know, I, I find that people reach a point where they either quit, which 
most people do because it is hard and it takes years. Or if they keep going, they keep going thinking, oh, I've grown comfortable with this. I'm okay if I never make it. It's okay if nothing ever becomes of this. And you start to embrace that vibration of mediocrity. And that's like a gazelle being like, I'm not quite sure if I'm going to get eaten today. There's good chance the lion might grab me. The other gazelles are like, don't hang out with that guy. You're going to get eaten. Actually hang out with that guy because the lion will get that guy instead of us. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, don't don't catch that attitude because it'll be you tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, and then and then you end up attracting other people who think like that too. And it's not about being arrogant. It's not about thinking you're the best thing in the world. It's just about believing that if you do the work and if you continue to grow, you will get there. Yeah, yeah. It, it, even the littlest steps. Even if you can spend five minutes a day. Um, imagine how much farther you're going to be in a month, a year than if you had spent zero minutes a day, even the tiniest bit that you can put out there or, you know, get yourself to, to do just the one thing that needs to be done that day to move yourself forward that tiny bit. And yeah, like you said, it compounds suddenly, suddenly you're a mile, two miles, 10 miles down the road. And, you know, your, yourself that wasn't taking any action is still sitting back there on the sofa, you know, waving goodbye to you. Yep. Yep. It's one of those things when you, when you break it down, you, you know, like take reading, for example, you know, it can sound daunting, especially to somebody who's not really into reading to say, oh, read this, you know, 300 page book and you put it off because it just seems so daunting. You end up not doing anything, but if you just read 10 pages a day, mm -hmm. you'd be done in a month. Yeah, you don't have to read 300 pages in one sitting. It could be exactly. half a chapter. Yeah, it could be a whole chapter. It could be, like you said, 10 pages. That might even be more than one chapter for some books. <laughs> it's true. You know, I've started doing something recently that's had a profound impact on my own life, which is tracking my, what I call my key activity. So, mm -hmm. you know, based upon my own creative career, wanting to be, you know, making films right now, my key activity is writing scripts. So if there's one thing I need to be doing, it's, it's writing scripts. So I started just tracking that in a Google Doc. And I made that Google Doc the first thing that pops up whenever I open my browser. So I can't get away from it. And it's super simple. It says, did you write today? How long? How many pages? That's it. And every day I see and I can start to see that progress. And I've got little trends built in that shows you, like, am I trending up or trending down? And it lets me actually it's eye opening to actually see the progress that you're making when you start to do those little things, even just an hour a day, how that starts to compound rather yeah. than oh, I'm going to take a week off and you start to really see the impact that taking a week off makes. I imagine you see that rippling out um, from the people that are contacting you, the people who are um, reading your stuff and talking about it or uh, the people, you know, or even just your own mental energy and focus to keep moving forward. You take that that time off and it, that will too compound, I'm assuming, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And so I have found as somebody who's not, not big on tracking things, I have found that paying attention and tracking these important aspects of your life and seeing it in black and white has been eye-opening. Sure. So what are the best free or low cost business building resources that you know of besides that, because that's an amazing, completely free builds, uh, you know, uh, tracking resource that you use to actually grow your business from a, a mental and uh, perspective state. I don't know how else to put it, but um, besides that, that tracking spreadsheet where you're working on your key activities and watching that grow over time, what other uh, resources like that can you recommend to people? Um, well, there's, there's a lot of things that I, I talk about in the four day challenge and it's, it's not free. My four day challenge is $37, but I, I think what you get for $37 is pretty, pretty f uh, profound. You know, it's it sounds more very than a reasonable <laughs> handful of Starbucks cups worth. <laughs> right. And, and so some of the key exercises we walk through in the challenge are a very specific um, goal setting slash visualization exercise that paints a vivid picture 
of what you're really trying to achieve. And it also helps you do some soul searching to see what is it that you're really going after and to paint a picture of that because the way our subconscious minds work is, you know, they're taking in, science says about 120 million bits of data per second, but our conscious mind can only process 120 bits per second, which means 99.999% of the things that you as a human notice about the world around you and the people around you is never being raised to your conscious awareness, which means you can't act on it. And you see this all the time. Like if you've ever looked for a, a new car, I remember I was looking for a Volkswagen GTI one time and oh, like magic, the next day, Volkswagen GTIs everywhere. And that happened because I told my brain that it was important. Otherwise, you just notice, you know, like the purple car that's on the road because it stands out, but you might not want a purple car. So the same thing applies when you're trying to achieve anything in life. And if you're not priming your subconscious about here's exactly what I'm looking for, it's not going to point it out to you. And the truth of the matter is you're passing up opportunities. There's always been GTIs on the road and I just never looked for them. So whatever it is that somebody's trying to pursue, getting clear about that, listening to that, I call it your pinnacle moment, and just recording that and listening to it every morning and every night helps you notice those opportunities that you don't even know you're missing. Oh, that's really interesting. And in a way, that uh, key activity tracking document is another version of the same thing. It helps you keep top of mind that core piece of business that you are are wanting to be or becoming known for it's and another way a, to make that gti right there in your head absolutely and that's you know that is how our the limbic system of, of our brain as well as our subconscious it needs repetition it's the only way it's very thick-headed <laughs> you gotta be repetitive to really get it in there some of us are even thicker than others. <laughs> yeah, right. It takes a little while sometimes, but yes, that's that's a wonderful tip. Um, so what can you advise about starting or growing a business, particularly since it's your area of expertise, particularly a business with creative output during this global pandemic? Um, you know, I think, and this is especially during this time, it can it can seem like a more daunting task than it might otherwise be. But I think the key to any business, the key to life for that matter, is building the right relationships. And in, in the business world or in pursuing a creative career, which is a, just one form of business, there are five key relationships that people need to build. And I feel like most people and I can say this because I've been there and it's been so much of my life, you kind of, you happen into relationships and you hit it off with somebody, you don't hit it off with somebody and, and you kind of take what's given to you and develop what comes naturally rather than very intentionally thinking about who you need to get to where you're trying to go. And when I think about the relationships that have made me successful in these various areas, I've noticed that it's well-rounded. So I think about it like a house. So if you picture a house, your foundation are your guides. And these can be mentors, coaches, role models, you know, people who are ahead of you on the path and can help guide you in what you need to do. You know, what is that one small next step you need to take to keep on the path? And you've got to have the mindset of a student. You've got to be willing and wanting to learn. You've got to kind of let go of the ego to, to really engage with your guides and get the most value out of them. And then your walls are going to be people that are at your level. And there's two types. There's peers who are people at or around your level who are pursuing similar but different goals. So that might be, you know, fellow filmmakers making other films or even musicians or something tangential. And with your peers, it's all about helping each other. It's about making introductions and be, giving feedback, you know, being a sounding board for people. And so the mindset of a consultant is I'm here to help consult for you and make your work better. And, and you do the same for each other and you form a peer group. And then similarly, on the, other, on the other wall, you've got partners. So these are people who you are going after the same goal with. 
And I just had a conversation today with a producer friend of mine about working with another producer and, and the three of us coming together to, you know, start to dig deeper into a production company idea that we have. And so finding those people who you want to be partners with, but then you have to have the mindset of a collaborator. And you, I got to let go. Like I've got, I want to bring all my ideas to the board, but I've got to be open to other people's ideas too. And iron sharpens iron and they help you get to where you're going. And then your roof also consists of two parts. These are going to be your delegates, people that are working for you, whether they're employees, contractors, volunteers, and you have to learn how to be a leader. You're leading these people and you're, you got to learn charisma and inspiring them. And then last but certainly not least, you've got your audience, whether that's fans, followers, clients, customers, whatever that looks like for your business. And that again, kind of tying back to the beginning of this, you got to have a servant's heart. What do they need? What do they want? How can you serve them with what you're making, even if it's something like your own music? Wow, I, re I really like that. It, it reminds me of, um, there's a, a concept that I learned about in some studies uh, that I took, uh, graduate studies in agile project design and management and there's yeah. a japanese concept i believe it's called shuhari if i mm. remember right and it's the three stages of becoming um you start as a novice when you learn something you become proficient at that and then at the read level at the master level you then teach it to others and and i like that framework that you that you just laid out because it it builds out that concept into into uh, a couple of new areas. I, I really I really like that that thought that you just said, where the walls are not just your peers, but but business collaborators as well, mm -hmm. um, which are a different set of peers entirely. And I love exactly. that the roof is people that you're bringing up, you're leading and and raising yes. up behind you, and yes. the people who you essentially answer to as your boss. You're audience the people who pay your bills because they're <laughs> buying your stuff yep oh, that's a really good exactly. insight thank you for sharing that yeah my pleasure so how do you continue to learn in order to stay on top of things within your ever-changing role it sounds like you are a big reader <laughs> what else uh what and what resources do you recommend for others to learn from yeah i i'm a big reader and i'm i'm late to the game of biographies and autobiographies. I'd only read a couple up until this year. And just for whatever reason, I was like, you know what, I need to start digging deeper into people's lives. And, and it's, it's eye opening, because you start to really learn again, what the path to success looks like, and what they did and the choices they made, how they handled situations. And it's, I've, I've, I'm frustrated with myself, I didn't do that earlier. <laughs> um, you know, for people who love listening to stories, Imagined Life is a great podcast by Wondry that takes a narrative storytelling approach to somebody's life and they don't reveal the identity until the very end. So you're kind of trying to guess who it is and you're like, oh my gosh, that was, you know, Ellen DeGeneres' story. I never knew that about the early days, you know, things like that, that I think are eye-opening. That I'm sounds also, really interesting. I'll have to check that one out myself. Oh man, you will fall in love with it. Cool. You will fall in love with it. I, I'm big on YouTube. I think you can learn anything on YouTube. And I, I, best little learning hack is to watch YouTube videos at 2x speed. Number one, you can get that much more digested. And number two, it forces you to pay attention because when somebody's talking that fast, they go like this and like, you have to focus. <laughs> It's true. I to was be able to get it. Yeah, I was literally talking about that with another guest, um, uh, a, poly, a guy who's into uh, polymathy and um, mm. optimized learning and uh, development. And same thing. He's like, I pushed it up to two and a half speed, but it's very hard. I was like, I can barely handle one point seven five. I'm watching <laughs> <laughs> intently, just like catching everything. I I thought of it um, at the time, of course, as you know a, a cramming more into my brain faster hack i didn't really think of it until literally that conversation about a week ago and now mm. again with you of of the focus part of it because you're not multitasking when you're listening to something exactly. at two times speed nope. you are just picking up every word and it comes at you so fast and it just it's oh one time i tried to take notes 
at two times speed that that didn't work for me yet i'm I'm building up to it <laughs> i don't think i've gotten that one down either <laughs> it's a definitely a skill that can be developed <laughs> so what else uh, what else do you recommend uh is there a i love the podcast recommendation that you gave is there a particular writer or, or book or um you know another podcast or a series on YouTube that you have found to be very helpful in business development? It's a great question. Um, I just recently read a book that I, I wrote the author and asked, how can I buy this in bulk to give to people? Like, and I don't know that I've ever done that. And fascinating guy. I just, it's actually, it's a good story. I'm a storyteller. I have to tell a story. Tell the story. So, That'll be great. Uh, my my filmmaking producer friend sent he always he's always sending me links to something film related and I love it. And uh, he sends me this one link and it's to a Zoom call with some guy named Steve Sims speaking. Never heard of this guy before. I look him up, and his kind of tagline is the real life world of Oz or uh, w- w- real life Wizard of Oz. And as an artist who went by the name the Tin Man. I had to check this guy out. That speaks to you. (laughs) Right? It speaks to me. And in doing some quick due diligence, I came to learn that he is from London. He was a bricklayer from a long lineage of bricklayers who decided that he wanted something more for his life and is now the world's preeminent concierge for the uber wealthy. So literally his job is to take phone calls from the uber wealthy to make their dreams happen, whether that's becoming James Bond for a weekend or sectioning off the statue of David to have lunch in front of it privately with Andrea Bocelli singing to you. You know, like people come with these dreams and he makes them real. And he just- Okay, I'm so jealous I want that job. (laughs) (laughs) Right? Right, and it just goes to show you that lit. I, I, this is something that I believe in, and I'm so sorry to jump in and ruin your your no, storyline here. But I'm just so excited by this because what a exemplary, uh, with the pinnacle of vocation creation. This guy built a vocation out of helping make literal millionaires' dreams come true, and I'm sure he gets very well rewarded for it. <laughs> and plus how fun how absolutely fun making these things happen and the problem solving that it would take and the coordination and the sense of satisfaction when you see the happiness on the person's face who you arranged this for i just okay i'm just i'm just gonna sit in here in a reverie for a little while just going cool career gotta talk to that guy for vocation creation (laughs) and talk about like making whatever dream you have feel significantly more realistic. You know, just read what this guy's pulled off. So I hop on the Zoom call and it was, happened to be super intimate. There was maybe 15, 20 people and, and this guy. And he was taking questions and I asked him, I said, well, what, what do you do, you know, when you have this crazy thing you're trying to achieve and, and you know, inevitably you're going to get stuck and what's, how, how do you find your way, your obstacle, you know, your way around that? And he goes, you're thinking about it all wrong. He goes, what I do is I think about not what they want, but what they desire that they haven't even told me. And he tells me the story about a client who said, I want to, I want to meet Journey. Journey's my favorite band. I want to meet them, just shake their hand. And he's like, that's, that's what would make you happy. He's like, yeah, that's like my dream. And he asked more questions, learns about this guy, learns that this guy was in a journey cover band for a number of years and, you know, like, and just the extent of things. And so unbeknownst to his client, he, instead of the goal was meet journey, shake their hand, but he takes the goal. I'm going to get you on stage singing songs with journey for 10,000 people. That's what I'm going to do. Now that is a dream, duetting with Steve Perry. (laughs) Wow. But just that mentality of how can I 10X what you just said that you want? And then you start to go after that. And you got a lot of margin of error. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, there's there are a lot of moving parts involved in that. Not least of which, uh, obviously, they can't perform in giant 
arenas anymore at this stage in the global pandemic mm. as they were before. Clearly, this happened in the past, but I can't even imagine the difficulties of trying to arrange something like that now. But it could actually make it easier in some sense, too, because people aren't yeah, in the middle of, you know, a 30-city uh, incredibly complex tour. They're sitting at home, like, waiting for the phone to ring, too, just like the rest of us. And, you know, what, what you start to realize is there's different playbooks for different goals. And so if I said, okay, I want to make $4 million in the next five years, that is going to color how I think it's going to color on I'm, I'm, everything I think about is going to be through the lens of how am I going to get to $4 million in the next five years? And if somebody just challenged me and said, how would you get to 400 million in five years? It's an entirely different playbook. Like you're literally thinking of completely different ideas. It's not the same stuff. So the, what you do becomes completely different. And that's where I think there's so much value in that thought process is, okay, what's your goal? 10x that. How would you get there? Because that's a really it's good just, point. it's going to shift your perspective. Yeah. I think a lot of people, um, you know, at, it, there, there seems to be a, a, a big mindset around, I want to hit $100,000 a year for people who live off of their own ingenuity, creativity. Mm -hmm. Like that's the dream, 100000 a year. What a fantastic question. What about living off or what about creating a million dollars a year worth of value and income for yourself? What about creating $5 million a year of income and value? <laughs> that You're right. Those are completely different ways of thinking because it, I believe that pretty much anyone who is willing to you know, do the right things and work hard at it can hit $100,000 a year from their creative output. Um, Agreed. It takes an entire, I'm not saying that people can't, but it would take an entirely different, like you said, playbook. That's a really good way to put it. Playbook, mindset, and belief system to confidently say, I can hit a million dollars this year. I can hit $5 million. I can hit $10 million this year as an artist. That is a really yep. interesting point. Yep. So do you help you people hit $10 million a year? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, whatever people want. I mean, that's still, you know, that's, that's a waypoint on my goal. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. But no, it's, it absolutely. I, I want to help people think differently about what they're trying to achieve because it, it helps you get focused on what you really want to be doing, you know? Right. And a lot of times the answers that come from that shifted perspective are not the ones that are going to pay off as quickly. And so sometimes, you know, you, I'm a, I'm a big believer in to get to the yacht, you've got to, sometimes you have to have a dinghy, right? If you're standing on the shore, you got to get in a small boat to be able to get to the big boat. And so it's about figuring out what the big boat is and what you need to be doing to get there. But at the same time, building the dinghy, that's, that's going to create the sustainable life for you. And I think that's what it comes down to is creating a sustainable life that you enjoy that enables you to place bigger bets that are just inherently going to take longer to pay off. Yeah. And of course, I want to emphasize not everybody wants a, a yacht. Some that's people so are 100%. They would be absolutely thrilled with a really nice, solid dinghy that will take them around the bay, help them do some fishing, you know, help them relax, get out in the sunshine, uh, you know, just chill, basically. And a dinghy is exactly what they need and want in their life. And that's perfectly fine, right? And some people completely can't stop at a dinghy. They need to go for the <laughs> for the the uh, catamaran, and then they need to hit that giant yacht. And that's that's great too. There's uh, different goals, different people, completely acceptable and um, wonderful. If if you know for sure, I believe very much in creating a work environment that um, supports your lifestyle and your life goals. Yeah. And if your lifestyle and life goals are not caviar <laughs> wishes and champagne dreams, <laughs> great, then, you know, it, it may, it is probably going to be an easier road for you to reach wonderful Zen happiness if, if your champagne dreams uh, are, you know, Bud Light. <laughs> and, and I love the fact that people can be very 
soul satisfied um, at so many different levels of engagement and income. Um, and so I, I definitely, you know, don't want people to think that that at least in my opinion, I'm, I'm saying that, you know, only go for a yacht. That's the only thing that matters because, you know, it really, it really isn't. But for some people that is truly all that matters. And it sounds like um, you have a really good way to help people come up with the mindset changes and the bigger picture to get to the yacht if that is their dream. Well, and that's, you know, to your point, whether, you want a dinghy, whether you want a catamaran, whether you want a yacht, that's, that's no one's place to judge. And you get to pick whatever life you want to have. And, but that's where the pinnacle moment comes into play. You know, when you define, you pick this moment in time, five to 10 years out, that is inevitable if you get to do the things you want to do. And you, you draw that with, with clarity and you start to see, you can unpack that. You can start to look at that moment and say, who's in this moment? Do I have all those people or are those people I need to meet? What other people have had similar moments? What things led them there? So that tells me what projects I might need to be taking on in order to get there. And you can start to unpack it. That becomes your roadmap for getting there, no matter what that is. And it's such a wonderfully scalable exercise because it, no matter how big your dreams are, it works. Have you seen... Uh, people before? Have you experienced a person who believed that their pinnacle dream was as big and as good as they could ever do it? And then they hit that and they went farther and they did more. And then they hit that and then they went farther and did more and their dreams just kept getting bigger and they kept achieving them. I'm sure you've probably seen that throughout your creative career. Oh, without question, without question. And I, that's, you know, I'm a big Tony Robbins fan. And one of his famous quotes is you're either growing or you're dying. Everything mm -hmm. that is alive on our earth is either growing or it's dying. And when you reach a point, you know, and this is why I think you, there are so many people out there who are rich, famous, and miserable is because the satisfaction doesn't come from the place. It comes from the journey. And that's why people keep going past their dreams is because they fall in love with the life process. They fall in love with the doing. And that's why I'm a big believer in really pursuing the purity of what you want to be doing to, because you're going to need that daily passion. You're building a life that you want to live every day. The outcomes happen. They will come and they will go and there will be new ones and bigger ones. And the point to me of goal setting is just to get your compass heading straight so that the path that you end up on is one that you enjoy. Oh, I couldn't have said it better myself. That is very well put. That's a really good way to wrap up. And so as we wrap up, what question would you want me to ask you that I have not asked you yet? Or hmm. what would you just like to add to the conversation? It's a great question. Um, hmm. Oh, well, I guess ask me if... <laughs> I had it to do over again. Would I do anything different? Oh, I get this I, question a lot. Or like, what advice yeah. would you give to your younger self? That is a great question. So I will ask it. <laughs> if, I'll ask both. If you, if you were able to go back in time, say to middle school and do it all over again, what would you do? Or would you take the choice to give advice to your younger self? Would you go back and redo it or would you go give yourself advice? And what mm. would that be? <laughs> I love the middle school self. Um, middle school is the worst. <laughs> it's it like, really that's is. where everything just yeah, falls apart in, in a kid's life, right? I think... <laughs> If I were to go back, 
in an encounter of my middle school self. I was wearing sweatpants at the time. So what I would do is I would buy a pair of jeans and a nice t-shirt and I would gift it to myself. And I would just simply say, you know, things are going to turn out great. Oh. And just leave it at that. Because I think the biggest thing, it's not about doing things differently. It's about the encouragement to stay the course. Because we're all on our own paths. We all have the, our own things that we need to learn. And the only way to learn them is to go through them. I, for a long time, tried to keep myself from regretting law school. Because, you know, that was a decade of my life and hundreds of thousands of dollars of debt. And it's easy to say, man, like it has nothing to do on the face of what I'm doing now. Just think about if I had a decade, if I could take 10 years to invest in filmmaking, I'd, I'd already be probably at the goal that I have for myself because I'm starting this iteration of my career late. But as a storyteller, I know all too well that we are made up of our experiences and the perspective that I have now as a writer and a director, I couldn't have had I not spent 10 years being an attorney, four years being a tech entrepreneur and four years pursuing music professionally. I just, I wouldn't have this, I'd have a different perspective, but it wouldn't be this one. And while it has seemed like I've started over numerous times, what I have found is that life is cumulative. And everything that you learn from one iteration just passes forward to the next iteration. I agree. I remember something that my mom told me. Um, I, I was a very uh, scattered student and never wrapped up my bachelor's degree, even after many years of just taking a class here and a class there. Go figure. It doesn't really add up. <laughs> but uh, she told me once um, in my mid-30s, she said, you know, when you get your bachelor's degree, you never go backwards. Nobody can take it away from you. You never lose it. It's just something that and you're going to get older anyway. So why not get older with a degree? And so I enrolled in a bachelor's degree completion program, which ended up being incredibly good timing because it took me into a change in my career at the time. Um, that was a, an incredibly positive change that I really wanted. And it turns out I needed my degree to be able to mm. get that particular role. And I was wrapping up at age 38, my, my undergrad <laughs> in business administration and marketing, and was able to take that really big promotion, which ended up completely changing the course of my professional life. So, wow. um, you know, it was, if I hadn't started at that point, um, I wouldn't have been prepared for that. And it was just, you know, it was just those words just that, you know, it will, it may never affect your life, but nobody can take it away from you. So why not just get it done? Just do it and get it done. And it did it. it like you said, you know, the cumulative experience then of all my previous school allowed me to, you know, be able to get back into school with a year of accelerated college and I had my degree and yay. Yeah. So that was 10 years ago. And I'm really glad that, you know, she put it to me that way because it really does. Um, it, it shows you a, what um, the things that you've done in your past can add up to and B um, it, it helps put you into a whole new path. You're, you're clearly you, you developed, um, you know, an articulate way to speak your mind and to frame ideas in law school and by practicing law mm -hmm. that you probably would not have developed so thoroughly had you not been there. So I, yep. I agree. It all adds up to make a new and better you, even if it seems like it was a detour. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. All right. Well, thank you for that. It sounds like you wouldn't go back and change a thing then. I can't because uh, you don't know what you would lose. Really good point. <laughs> you don't, do you? That, that brings me to a recurring dream that my husband has where he is able to see the lines of a multiverse and see all the impacts of different decisions. And I was like, every time oh, he wow. wakes up and he's like, I had that dream again. I was like, oh, if only there were actually real situations you were looking at. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. <laughs> They're all just stupid dream situations that have that no bearing on real now. life. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but that's all right. Anyway, it would be really cool to know, but you can't. So why regret? <laughs> exactly.
<laughs> well, thank you so much, Marshall. Where can people find you online? No, oh, my pleasure. Uh, well, the new venture you can find at SpartanArtists.com, and there's a there's a bio on me too that'll take you to my other website. But if you're also into the into the social medias, this is the Tin Man is my handle. So this is the Tin Man, just like the world of uh, world of odds. Wonderful. Marshall, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for your very eye-opening look into the creative process and um, and building dinghies so that you can get to your yachts. I really appreciate it. <laughs> yes. My pleasure, Jennifer. Thank you so much for having me on. It's been a blast. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Vocation Creation Podcast. Join me each week for inspiration and motivation to do the work you can't wait to wake up to. I'm Jennifer Wenzel. Find more at vocationcreation.com.